I would say I'm a nature painter and all forms of nature. So the seasons, landscape, seascape. Um, I even painted some cities. Uh, the, the trees look like calligraphy, you know, those very long ones. They look like Aleph and Lam, adding elements of snow into the work. And one of those snow paintings made it into Beijing at the National Art Museum. And uh, in, in Karachi, looking at the beach and adding elements of calligraphy to the beach paintings, I exhibited those paintings in Netherlands at Gallery Patrice van Doors. Uh, I started getting a lot of offers internationally to show my work because it was very, very different for them, you know. They uh, welcome to the program. Today we have with us an artist who is known for her own artwork, but also for promoting artwork internationally. Today we have player to have with us uh, Surya Sikandar, who is a very well-known artist from Pakistan and currently living in Dubai. And she will be explaining about Pakistani art in a series of talks on this channel. Welcome to the program, uh, Surya. Thank you so much. It's, it's my honor to be here. Uh, Surya, we will be talking to you in the first program uh, we will talk about your own work and your own education and your efforts to promote art around the world. So first of all, would you like to explain to our viewers your own style and what kind of artwork you do and what were your inspirations and how you landed into becoming an artist? Um, I, I always enjoyed drawing and painting. I, I love painting from a very young age. It was one of my favorite subjects. I, I used to paint in school. Um, and sometimes when I was attending other subjects and classes, I used to sit at the back and I used to be sketching. So my early teacher said that I was, I was almost born an artist, uh, or at least I loved it very much. And uh, I traveled a lot from a very young age. Um, I, I was exposed to a lot of different countries and different parts of Europe, as well as Hong Kong and Singapore. And what I remember from those places is, is their, the landscapes of all those countries and nature. And one of the things that really uh, influenced me and, and left a, a lasting impression and impacted my work was, was winter season and were the landscapes of Europe. Uh, because in, in winter, and in fact, starting autumn, they, they shed all their leaves. And the, the, the trees look like calligraphy, you know, those very long ones. They look like Aleph and Lam and thing. And I used to look at them and I, I was also studying Urdu. I was being taught because, I, you know, I was also exposed to Pakistani education. And I, I was looking at it sometimes in, in Europe or, or in Western countries or even, uh, say, you know, parts of uh, Singapore, or Hong Kong. And I, I was looking at calligraphy as well. And I said, this is very interesting. I can see the calligraphy in the trees and in nature. And uh, I think that that was just something that, you know, uh, just naturally stayed on my mind and I started sketching and drawing it. And, um, and then later with time, I got more involved with studying art history. I took up art in school at JC O levels. Um, and later for A levels, I did art tuitions. I worked with uh, different art tutors. And then in 2004 or five, I got admission in the Indus Valley School of Art and Architecture for a BFA in fine arts. And then um, later I wanted to go to Lahore. I actually, um, I'm a huge Lahore fan um, just because I, I love nature so much. So Lahore and Islamabad attract me a lot because I, I love trees. But uh, the time that I was in Karachi, I started painting the sea because Karachi being a beach city, I got very attracted to the beach and the colors. So I started painting and experimenting. And then I went to Lahore and over there I started making uh, crayon and colored and, and marker sketches and, and working with pastels to make the, the Bagh Jinnah and other gardens, Lawrence Gardens and, and so many beautiful spots that I saw, Model Town Park. Um, and I, they were so beautiful that I, I, I just had to document them somehow because, you know, with, with winter, you, you know, you only have it for one or two months or maybe three months if you're lucky. So because I loved it so much, I somehow wanted to hold on to it. And I'm not a photographer. I'm an artist. So for me, holding on to something is through painting it and, and drawing it. And, uh, and then with these paintings, I, ideas came to mind. And I said, what if I, what if I add rivers to them? What if I add lakes? What if I add 
elements of, um, you know, what I saw, the trees without the leaves, calligraphy. And it just came in a very natural and spontaneous way. And the calligraphy landscape happened through experiments. And, uh, you know, I think it was, it's really an inner calling. I don't think it's something you can become an artist or like being a singer, really. I mean, you can train and perfect your skill, but it, it has to be an inner calling. And that's how I got very involved. And uh, now I think it's been, I, I don't know, I, I, I had my first exhibition at the end of 2008, uh, my first debut group exhibition in 2009, August, my first solo show in 2010. And now it's been, uh, I suppose, 12 years, hasn't it? So, so you basically um, paint uh, in uh, uh, landscapes, uh, mostly in collage work. Uh, how would you explain your own style that um, what is your forte in the in the, in the art uh, i would say i started with painting uh, nature in in various forms so I, I painted a lot of flowers a lot of flowers and vases and i was very interested in their color and texture and i saw these patterns inside the flowers the lines and uh, from the flowers came, you know, flowers in gardens. From the gardens came very large landscapes and experimenting with landscapes, looking at the season of autumn, winter, adding elements of snow into the work. And one of those snow paintings made it into Beijing at the National Art Museum, the Beijing Binale. And uh, in, in Karachi, looking at the beach and adding elements of calligraphy to the beach paintings, I exhibited those paintings in Netherlands at Gallery Patrice van Doors. And when I sort of came up with this breakthrough style of calligraphy landscape, which was very new, uh, I started getting a lot of offers internationally to show my work because it was very, very different for them. You know, their, their understanding of calligraphy is uh, maybe not the same as ours and Western calligraphy and Eastern Arabic are very different. But the idea of mixing calligraphy with, with landscape or with nature was very new for them. And uh, that's how I started showing abroad. And uh, I would say I'm a nature painter and all forms of nature. So the seasons, landscape, seascape. Um, I even painted some cities. I, I like to sort of um, document places that I see, beautiful places and interpret it in my own way. Um, so not, not so much a, like a 100% realistic photo, but more like the impression it makes on me, the colors, the changing seasons and, and, and the mood it creates. Oh, good. And um, where were your training and education mostly took place? Like um, you told us that you uh, took admission in, in this uh, Valley School and where else you studied uh, art? A lot of early training took place in Pakistan, in Karachi and Lahore. Uh, in Karachi, I was a student uh, before Indus Valley. I went to some famous artists in Karachi like I was taught drawing by uh, Mr. Atha Jamal, who trained me for my A-levels and O-levels. I went to Mrs. Nayar Jamil. She's, again, a famous tutor there, and she taught me for Indus Valley. I did one year of Indus Valley, but I, I really wanted to go to Lahore. In Lahore, um, I joined a very different department. I, I went into journalism because I was interested in communication as well, media and communication. And I got my degree in that. And uh, meanwhile, I was still practicing and working with different artists and drawing and painting. And after graduating from Lahore, I went to London to the Slade School of Fine Art, which is a very, very famous art college in, in UK. It's part of UCL. And uh, over there, I did uh, a very intensive program, which is the Fine Art um, Summer Intensive. And we were exposed to all forms of drawing, painting, um, it, it was slightly conceptual style education. So, and one of our tutors was American, so it was very interdisciplinary. I mean, one minute they were training us in sculpture, the next we were being taught video editing, and the next we were making uh, drawings and then working with photography. And um, it, it was a very nice experience, but I wanted something a little traditional because I, I like conceptual art and I like um, the idea of mixing media. But at the same time, I'm a little old fashioned and I think that drawing has to be, it's a skill and the skill needs to be polished and trained. So I went to another art college in London called London Atelier of Representational Arts, Laura. Uh, this is a very, very old fashioned um, college where they teach you 16th century, 15th century academic drawing. So you have a model standing in a pose, you know, maybe holding a stick and in that same pose for days and you have to sketch them perfect and they teach you muscles and back. It has to be realistic. Um, 
and there's really no margin for error. And you work with live models. You have uh, older men, you have a younger, you will have a very young model, you know, a young girl, you can have a much elderly lady, and you're exposed to, to faces, to different jaw lines, to wrinkles, to different types of skin, skin colors. And um, so this is where I really learned to draw and develop my skill. And uh, it, was, it was a wonderful experience. And then I came back to my country and I um, focused a lot on drawing and painting in a, in a slightly traditional way. But I think uh, because I had had a lot of different influences and I lived in different countries, I came up with a new style that was the calligraphy landscape, which really sort of put me uh, on, on, the, on the map and got me the attention. Uh, but it was a result of um, a lot of different experiences and coming together, which led to my own individual style. I think sometimes when you're exposed to one particular kind of education or one particular system, then, um, you know, it's very hard to create something original. And to create original, you have to take a step back, look at different things, experiment, try different styles, find what works for you, what doesn't, take your time and... I mean, invention is a messy thing. It requires a little bit of uh, change and it requires a little bit of searching, a little bit of getting lost, a little bit of uh, trial and error. Um, and uh, I think that's how I arrived, going through different influences and different trainings. And these days, uh, you told me that you are um, working on uh, frescoes and that's fascinating you these days. So can you show some of the work that you're doing, currently doing? Yes. So I went to uh, Lahore recently to the National College of Arts. So with time, I'm becoming more and more interested in traditional arts, which is the opposite of my peers because they're all getting interested in digital art. And I'm going in the opposite direction and going 100% into handmade. Um, so I looked at a lot of the Mughal frescoes, which I thought were just stunning. I looked at some of the work at Wazir Khan Mosque, at, uh, on images, you know, in, in India, a lot of the Mughal fort fortresses, um, and looking at their images, uh, not so much in real life, but online and through friends, through references. Mm -hmm. I think this is really stunning. And the work that's done uh, by the Mughal, uh, Mughal trained court painters is so detailed and the geometry and the lines and precision it's it's absolutely incredible so i i practiced in this tradition of mughal fresco painting and then i went to nc and i produced some new drawings so these i'd like to share with you these are my absolute latest drawings and they're a result of that very traditional mughal fresco painting training so this is my first drawing i will just hold it up it is a very um, traditional drawing practice with the kind of uh, borders. It's not, it's almost fully complete. There's some bits I need to fill in. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a lovely scene with, um, you know, some patterns repeated and some flowers. I actually really like the colors and I like how they keep uh, their colors very flat, uh, which is completely the opposite of European training where everything is blended and it's tonal. But in very Asian art, like Japanese art, woodblock prints, and um, you know, Mughal fresco. They they keep the colors separate. They they don't mix one with the other. It's a very interesting approach. And then I looked at another work. Um, so I looked a lot at geometry and Islamic arts and crafts, and I produced this very geometrical kind of design. Uh, again, the work in progress. It's a drawing, and I like the kind of patterns and inlays and repetition of pattern and motifs that. Uh, were created during this work and a third one which is quite interesting it's um it's very inspired by Vazir Khan Mosque frescoes and uh, this is a very traditional uh, Mughal fresco painting so you have a beautiful tree the tree representing knowledge and and you know knowledge representing wealth wealth being wisdom and uh, the beautiful flat flowers you know you have a hint of sun and the archway and this could be the tree of life or the tree of knowledge and what's very interesting about the the mughal arts at the time was um it it wasn't so heavily um figurative uh, especially you know given islamic arts and crafts history um, you know, it, it was generally non-figurative in the beginning. I think they were trying to find their own identity and Christian art was so much about sculptures and angels and uh, depictions of, um, you know, uh, Jesus and Mary that I think that uh, Islamic arts completely deviated and looked at geometry and precision of form, 
perfection of drawing, you know, stars, eight point stars, um, certain patterns. And I think work like this is very uh, kind of signature Islamic arts uh, for me as well. Uh, because this is completely opposite to how I was actually trained in the UK. Um, it was completely the opposite. Um, British, traditional British or European education in arts is very much about light, shade, form, perspective. Um, there's always a shadow, there's volume and mass. Whilst in Islamic arts, they don't always have a shadow. You know, you can have... Um, a little flower floating and it will not have a shadow which is quite uh, interesting because in real life that's not even possible you know if you have a flower somehow float even it will make a shadow and i thought that was so so interesting so in a way through fresco painting i rediscovered my own culture and heritage and uh, i realized it, it's a very rich legacy and we have a lot of our own way of doing things which is quite interesting and uh, so i took this as like a conversation or dialogue and from this, I, I'm developing new paintings um, like birds and butterflies and other paintings that are e extremely uh, cheerful to look at. And their patterns are repeated. Uh, some of them are just color, color into color. Um, it, it's uh, quite a fascinating new style of painting for me. And I, I think this change came because, especially because of the pandemic, um, because earlier I used to go out a lot to the beach, to the parks, and I used to be painting outdoors. But now with the pandemic, uh, especially in UAE, our government was very strict and they said, stay home, stay safe. And this was a very um, a recurring message sent to us through our phones and through our newspapers and so on. So it, it sort of stayed on my mind and you know we stopped going out and a lot of work and everything moved online. So I started spending more time indoors and staring more at things in an observational way. If there were flowers in front of me, I started observing the, the patterns in them. If I was looking at history, Mughal history, I was looking at what kind of work was being produced. If I was looking at you know, my own identity as um, South Asian or uh, a woman or Muslim, then I was looking a lot at the art produced at the time um, that was commissioned in the 17th century by Islamic rulers. And uh, I think the pandemic brought a lot of reflection, um, a lot of reflection in me being expat and living away from home. I was thinking about our region and how South Asia formed and how much, uh, how multicultural it is, how many different um, languages and uh, different, um, you can say, influences and ethnicities we have. And then I looked at a little bit of the history of the subcontinent. And that's when I really got interested in our very traditional arts and crafts. And it, it's all handmade. It's quite interesting. And uh, would you like to uh, throw some light briefly on your efforts to promote art around the world? Particularly, you have been introducing Pakistani art across the world. Um, can you explain a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, sure. So my mother is a very patriotic Pakistani. She is. Um, one of the most patriotic people I know, and she's very proud Pakistani. Um, she she was born in Sargodha and she grew up in Lahore. She went to the Punjab University and she went to uh, Kinead College of Arts. And then later after she, she got married to my father, he, he was from Karachi, so she moved to Karachi. And there she spent a lot of time uh, in the 70s and 80s meeting uh, Ali Imam Saab. He was one of the first pioneers of Pakistani art. He set up the first Pakistani art gallery. I do not remember the date exactly, but I think it was in the 1960s. It was the first art gallery of Pakistan called the Indus Gallery. And she used to visit there and she was a student. And um, she used to, when she was in, in Lahore, she used to see her fellow students making art. For instance, Colin David, very famous artist from Pakistan was uh, in her class, but she wasn't doing painting. She was doing English literature, but she used to work very closely with the painting students. And she used to go down to the fine art department and Anna Malka Ahmed was the department head, another very famous artist. And across from them was the Lahore Museum. So when they used to walk down, uh, Sadhikan was painting the, the, he was painting the, the ceiling and it was a beautiful experience because she got to see that and he even made some sketches for her and her friends. So she got exposed to art and I think she wanted to somehow, you know, make people more aware of it. And then with time, she sort of um, got, got involved with journalism. She was writing articles about it. 
And uh, somewhere along the line, she started meeting more and more artists. She was writing about their work, creating awareness. She was very friendly with um, Ismail Gulji and Mrs. Zaru Gulji, very famous artist from Pakistan again. And she met a lot of other artists also later on. And she set up her art gallery, the Unicorn Gallery. Uh, she set it up in Karachi. Now it's in Karachi and Lahore. And she even had a branch in Dubai. Um, but so it, when I was born, I mean, there was already so much art uh, in our homes that, that she had bought and so many artists she had met and so many stories she had to tell us from her time at, at uh, Punjab University and at Kinet. And, uh, you know, when a very famous artist was having an exhibition, she would tell us that I remember him from his student days, you know, and, and the principal used to be chasing him and and he was bunking classes. And uh, so she knew all these artists and she knew their work. She had a very, very good understanding she has of mediums. And even though she's not an artist herself, she's more a scholar, but she has a very good understanding of art history and in what context, you know, certain work was produced. She knows her modern art movements and she has a very strong knowledge of Indian art also. So the art of M.F. Hussain, S.H. Raza, Tayyab Mehta, uh, Manjeet Bawa, all the Indian master artists, many of whom she met, she met Asaj Raza, M.F. Hussain Saab, when he came to Pakistan, twice he came to our gallery in Karachi. Mm -hmm. So because of her very deep involvement and engagement to arts, I was very fortunate to be exposed to it. So when I was not producing my own work, I was studying other artists' works. And as a home, we've always been committed to, to buying paintings, to displaying them, to exhibiting them, to creating YouTube videos, which we created a lot of Unicorn Gallery and we put them online and so many people learned. And the Metropolitan Museum wrote to us to have our catalogs on display in their library. And um, then she also um, auctioned a lot of paintings through, um, through uh, Bonhams, through Sotheby's, through different auction houses. And uh, she became like a patron of the arts. And, and a lot of people, you know, when I would go out in Karachi and Lahore, they would know uh, Unicorn Gallery and they knew my mother. And a lot of artists would try and, you know, get her phone number because they knew that she, she helps artists, you know. And artists are almost always struggling, you know, unless you're one of those very famous millionaire artists, uh, like uh, Jamil Naksh or something very famous. Otherwise, mostly artists are struggling and they could really do with all the support they can get. So she was that person who supported and she really, uh, she wrote to governments, she took the work around, she, she paid and financed a lot of exhibitions, including the one in London, the new art from Pakistan. We were very lucky to have uh, Vajit Shamsul Hassan Saab sort of host it for us. Uh, it was a complete unicorn gallery initiative and I thank you so much for having us and for also for, for calling the press and for calling all those wonderful um, connoisseurs and lovers of art. And uh, that's that's been our effort through all these years to take Pakistani art internationally. A lot of people don't know anything at all about Pakistani art. And we have a very rich legacy in, in interiors. And to give you an example, we have one of the oldest um, fresco paintings on our walls. We have beautiful Hindu sculptures that date back pre-partition. We have Lord Buddha sculptures. In parts of Punjab, we have Mughal frescoes, uh, Mughal paintings, ceramics, plates, so many decoration pieces. And of course, our Buddhas and Gandharas. And besides this, we have so many famous artists like Sabikan, Ahmed Pervez, Bashir Mirza. These are world-class artists. And really, uh, if if our government sort of put a little more money into the arts and crafts, then we could publish more books about them and, and have more museums and create more awareness. Because when our students learn about art history, they learn about, um, you know, Gainsborough and they learn about Francis Bacon and Lucien Freud and all the famous Western mod masters, even modernists like French Impressionists and, uh, you know, Cubist masters and so on. But they don't know anything about their own history. And that's really... Um, I, I feel like that's very unfair because we, we have such a rich history, but for some reason, it's just not in the spotlight. I, I don't know why it's not. So we started having a lot of these educational talks at Unicorn Gallery where we would invite art scholars. We invited Dr. Akbar Nakhvi, very famous author of Image and Identity. We invited Professor Salima Hashmi. We invited Marjari Hussain, Nilofar Farooq, Anwar Maraj, all the art critics of the time, uh, different authors, publishers, uh, columnists with Dawn, different people who had written essays on art. And we came and we asked them to just explain art to all kinds of audience. And we opened those uh, discussions to everybody. So it did not have to be an artist or an art curator or buyer, just somebody who even likes paintings to come in and ask these critics as many questions and to educate.
educate themselves and learn. Um, and it was it was a beautiful series of art programs we we had, and we started becoming known more as a, an art museum and an art education house and institute rather than a gallery, um, because we did a lot of educational activities. And even now, I mean, things have changed because of the pandemic, but we are actually launching yet another book. Um, this is on Esa Treza, Indian master, and we're working with Yashudara Dhamya, who came to Lahore to work with Salima Hashmi. And uh, we're launching that book online, and we're, we have our bookstore online. We're almost constantly putting things online. And the internet is, is such a democratic platform. Anybody can access it and it's free information knowledge for, for the whole world. Now we have people contacting us from America, from UK, from India, from Bangladesh, everywhere. And, and they're interested in Pakistani art. They want to learn. They, they ask us who are you know, some of today's best contemporary artists, what's their style, what's their work about, what's the price range. And sometimes it's just general curiosity or interest. And, and we like entertain every kind of inquiry we receive. Okay, thank you very much. And in the next program, we will uh, discuss with you more about the Pakistani art and its styles and uh, various phases of Pakistani art, its history. Thank you very much for joining us and we will have a complete series where you will be talking about Pakistani art with different perspectives uh, separately. Thank you. See you on the next program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.